Welcome to the Dog Trainers Podcast, a podcast created by dog trainers, for dog trainers, or anyone who's ever fallen in love with man's best friend. Right. So, so, so how I think the, the, the goal that, that I've always had as my own personal goal for what I hope to create is I want to create the tools that allow people to self-diagnose what tools I should use, what trainer training ideas I should practice, you know, uh, how much work it's going to actually, you know, take, you know, to be able to get a better perspective of the actual training process. Right. Cause we know as trainers, if you get a puppy, We'll just do it one stage at a time, right? Puppyhood, then childhood, then pre-adolescence, then adolescence. And just as he gets older, you just keep keep on going on. But we're always getting the dogs who are a year old. They're fucked. Yeah. Right. And then we have to fix them, right? And so if we can make dog training more digestible, easier to understand, um, easier to self-diagnose of what's right, what's wrong for this particular puppy, right? Because why are there so many training techniques and approaches? Because there's so many different kinds of personalities, puppies, variables, dog owners, Owners, uh, circumstances, whether they have kids, they don't have kids. There's so many things. Everyone's trying to give really simple answers for a very complicated problem. Mm -hmm. And the only, I I think, I think uh, the one thing that I hope this podcast helps at least for dog trainers is let's, let's simplify let's simplify the diagnosis, right? Let's, let's make things a lot easier for people to digest so they can help themselves. Can I say too, I, I think it, it is a combination of that. And I agree with you too, that collaboration will help with that because it'll like a rising tide raises all ships type thing. But also I do think that it's the more dog trainers collaborate and put out content together or individually, the more normal dog comes as a thing. And even if it's still somewhat complex, you're right there's just so much variety Mm -hmm. it's it's the complexity is there it's just not weird anymore it's like like social media you know like back in the day i can give my mom my phone right now and she'd be like what the hell am i looking at you know just because they don't quite understand but somebody who grew up with it they took it on just fine Mm -hmm. you know so i wonder if we can make more content more collaborative content Mm -hmm. and just make dog training like like you and i have talked about for a while just more mainstream more normal Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then the content becomes more digestible because people have have taken it in to it. Yeah. right over a period of time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you think about it, like I like I grew up from age 12 to 18 watching Caesar Milan. Right. right? And right. you know, prior to that, what dog shows were there? But no one's watching traditional television anymore, right? We're watching Even YouTube after channels that. or yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Right. But like I think all the content on the internet is making dog training more normal and we see that that effect already right we see a lot of millennials they're just like where's the e-collars right. <laughs> like 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 where are the pinch collars come on let's do this versus right. the 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 generation before they'd be like what 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 you know so we are seeing the effect of just this oversaturation of information it does have its confusing components but it has also this like desensitization component to it as well this normalization aspect right. to it, which is cool which is cool would it be um, fair to, to explain it this way? Like in, in, if this is wrong for your thought, then let me know. I feel like, you know, you were explaining it and it just gave me the words that the technical aspect is kind of there. Younger, newer trainers are like, oh yeah, you call it, you know, they're learning everything so quick because they have the tools that, that other trainers did not. But the commutative aspect isn't there yet. It hasn't become like a family yet. It's just a bunch of people who all know their shit and everybody yeah. needs to kind of come together and polish it all down and be like, here, man, you present it this way. You teach people this way. You explain it that way. Yeah. And and at the same time, you still should have your own way. Right. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Because there's nothing wrong with that. And that's, that's right, yeah. the beauty of this. And I, I think, think in, in gosh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. You no, know, I was just going to say that more importantly, even than normalizing tools is changing the, the perspective of dog owners on, on having a dog and what right. it means to live with a dog mm-hmm. and what's best for their dog and all of that, because I think we can prevent so many issues that require tools. And I, and I think e-collars and prion collars are great Mm -hmm. and I'm all for them and put it on most dogs, no problem. Right. Like, but I think that we can prevent just except for the genetic issues, but we can prevent most behavioral issues if owners simply understood how to live with their dogs differently. Right. right? Not even getting to like, the training aspect of it, even though, yes, technically it's training, how you live with your dog is training, all that stuff, but uh-huh, uh-huh. it's separated from the, the formal training 
of here's a training collar. Let's teach this, this, and this. Mm-hmm. The what process. Do you do with the, dog the rest of the day, yeah. right? Yeah. And to me, that's the most important part, really, because that's where yeah. that's where the dog either becomes a total brat or mm-hmm. anxious or aggressive. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. doesn't happen during the training sessions that you do. Right. Once right. It happens in the rest of the day. And if we can teach owners what that should look like and change the perspective on that and normalize. I call it, the, I call it a dog culture. Like, like you have yeah. culture that helps you raise your kids, but we don't have clear, concise cultures. It doesn't matter if you're Persian, if you're Jewish, if you're Latino, it doesn't matter. We have cultures that a kid at this age should be doing this. A kid at this age should be doing this. And it's just so unclear. It's so, uh, it, it, I wouldn't even say it's fuzzy. It's just un, underdeveloped for, for most yeah. dog owners, for sure. Agreed. Maybe it's, maybe it's to do with everything else is just getting so fast and so like automated. And so, Mm -hmm. but dogs are living animals. It's, it's, it's never going to be that, you know? So, yeah, I mean, I I like lately though, what I've been seeing as far as other content, people, people kind of making their voices heard as far as tools and things like you were saying, because of course, I think all three of us are aware the whole like positive reinforcement training and everything now, like kids and everything now is it's, it's growing in popularity. And yet, you know, I love to tell people it's fascinating to me that as a concept period, dog training or not, like never say no, you know, always say yes, everything else is is becoming so popular. And yet tools like e-collar and this and that are still becoming more popular at the same time too. Like not then, not then pure positive, but they're, it's not like they're shrinking in popularity. They're like this secret dark horse that's coming along the way. And I think the reason why is because while the idea is so nice, you know, how, how about you just never say no to your dog and never be mean ever. It sounds amazing. But at the same time, there's just like sheer footage. There's hours and hours of just like here, this was a dog that had this issue, this issue, this issue. I totally appreciate where these people are coming from. But for this particular dog, this thing saved his life and blah, blah, blah. And, and, you know, that's why I think it's just continuing to grow. It's just like straight up evidence, you know? So I want to see more and more of that. And I think the collaborative efforts are only going to become more normal. And I love that your podcast and this podcast are just giving people the opportunity to do it. Yeah. Yeah, And I think the reason why it's like you were saying, the tools are growing in popularity, even while the purely positive way of life, because it's not just a dog training thing, it's a way of life mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. is also growing really strong. But the, the more people that go towards a purely positive approach, the more people are also going to get turned off by it, All because right. there's only so far that, that you can go into that without realizing that it's just, it doesn't work. Right. Mm -hmm, Like mm -hmm. there's only so far you can get. And when you hit that, which Mm -hmm. everyone eventually does, and some people are just okay with hitting that plateau. Right. But a lot of people are like, no, I I want more. I don't want my dog to be doing this, this, and this. I want more for my dog. Mm -hmm. And their only option is to look the other way. And then they look the other way. And because there's trainers putting out shit tons of content, they're like, this is not what I was told it was, right? Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. I'm seeing dogs running around in a field and they're all wearing e-collars and they look happy. Like Mm -hmm. they're doing things with their owners. They're doing things with their trainers. Mm -hmm. Something doesn't line up. So when when they go one way, try it and it doesn't work. And then look at the way that they Mm -hmm. were told is all bad Mm -hmm. and see a lot of good. Then all of a sudden they're going to right away leave that because it shows that all of that was a fallacy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to be drawn towards it more and more. So. The more people that go to purely positive, the more people are going to come to. Right. And the, other- and the interesting thing. So you just brought up this awesome visual, visual paradigm, like going this way to going that way. And I, and I would say for the dogs, you know, dogs who are puppies and young and stuff like that, like that is a natural course that will happen. I go to, all the way to this direction. I find out it has its limitations and then they cut to a different direction where that they see more practical, measurable results. Right. And I think one big thing, and I was talking to Shona, actually one of our, our, our trainer friends um, yesterday was we were talking about, um, you know, everyone, everyone has a belief in dog training based on we are all protective of dogs, right? We're all loving and protective of the relationship that you can have with dogs and we don't want to damage it. And people, you know, think there's love, you can love different ways, love or tough love is love, like whatever it is. And so I realize as, as, as people who are more balanced dog training or who use all the quadrants, we tend to see the biggest thing that piss me off personally is sometimes the people who are going the pure positive route, well, they're doing it with a behavioral problem and they're doing it with a dog that could damage someone or something. And we know that that dog could lose its life mm-hmm. if 
you don't do certain other things that can control the dog. Right. And I think just on a personal note, that's actually where my whole career started was working with shelter dogs and dogs who were aggressive and things like that was, was that never, you know, it always breaks my heart to see someone doing something um, that sounds good, but we know it's, and then, uh, uh, you know, two weeks later, the dog's put down or three weeks later, they now want to give the dog up because the techniques weren't working. They weren't addressing certain issues. And then all of a sudden, boom, now the dog made a fatal mistake or made a mistake that made the person shut off to the dog completely and say to the backyard or to the shelter or to the, this or to the, that. And it's, a. Uh, yeah, I think with the exception of those moments, that that natural that natural pendulum swing would happen. Yeah, you know. And yeah, it's it's unfortunate. There's always going to be the dogs and the owners that are going to suffer because of it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's again why we got to just keep keep educating if we yeah. actually care about it. Why we say we do, right? Which mm-hmm. most most trainers genu- genuinely do, then then do something about it. And the way right. to do something about it is to make your voice loud. Like yeah. don't, don't sit at home. Don't just call your trainers and bit your trainer friends and bitch about it. Like, no, go online and show the opposite. Like the, the, the only way to counter bad information is with a lot of good information. Yeah. Right. It's the yep. only way, yep. right. Yep. You can be upset about it. You can argue with it. You can try to stop the bad information. It doesn't work. The only way to really change minds and to, to counteract negativity is with shit tons of positivity, right? And Mm -hmm. in this case, that means a lot of good information, a lot of information that you know truly will help owners, will save dogs' lives and Mm -hmm. all of that awesome stuff. Yeah. I I really want to do your challenge. I really do. That is a very good idea. Yeah. I want to do it. I mean, Mariana, you have to be on board with me for at least for DTP. Oh, dude, I'm down. I've already done the three platforms. I got my nonprofit. I got my business. And then DTP. So I'm down Same. to do it if you're down. And Russ, you can hold us accountable, bro. I will. <laughs> <laughs> I've already done the hardest thing in the world. I quit Hot Cheetos. And oh I'm my god! And I'm Hot like, Cheetos. <laughs> Hot Cheetos are a drug. I you know. Can do anything. If you can do <laughs> I'm really down. I'm really down. You guys, actually, you guys train together? We used to. We used to. Yeah. Now he's in LA and I live in Phoenix. I moved here just under two years ago. Uh, so not anymore. I mean, if I'm ever in town, then we'll do some stuff together. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the most part, we do our own separate thing other than the podcast and, and everything associated with it. But yeah, man, it, honestly, Brent, if you are, if you're down to do it, I will do it with you. Super down looking for a good excuse. I like a good social pressure challenge on me. We should make a hashtag for dog trainers so we can keep track of it. Oh, yeah. Damn. Okay. What's the, yeah. what's the, it's, it's on you, bro. It's your challenge. Let's do it. Here, hashtag dog trainer challenge only has less than a hundred posts. So we'll be actually able to keep track of it. Dog trainer challenge. Okay. I dig it. Yeah. How about hashtag daily dog trainer? Daily dog trainer. I'm going to look at it. I want to make sure it's not one that has like a million and a half. A bajillion. I know. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> a bajillion. I would yeah, imagine daily it doesn't dog have many. Also has less than a hundred posts. Let's do that. Oh, da- hashtag yeah, daily, dog, daily trainer. dog trainer. Okay. Cool. I'm on board. Anybody listening? I, I would like, this is Russ's challenge and I want to give you full credit and I, I would like to them to hear it in your voice, but dude, anybody else who's listening, I would strongly encourage. And I think Russ would too. Try it. Do it. Let's do, do it. it. I'm ready. Do it, do it for a selfish reason. Like don't do it to help owners. One right? month. One <laughs> month. <laughs> yeah. One month for the next 30 days, the daily dog trainer challenge from Nahum Russell. Yeah. And, and if you're actually doing it, anyone who's listening to this, if you actually do it, shoot me a DM and tell me you're doing it so that I can follow your page and follow along and encourage you because I think it's an awesome thing to do. And like I did it, I didn't have anyone challenging me and I didn't have anyone encouraging me besides for like the community that's slowly built around it. But yeah, right. Encouragement is good. So I'll be there and I'll, I'll cheer you on the whole way if you do it. Woo-hoo! That's awesome. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Love the it. Year. You want to try the year, Brent? I mean, I was just going to start with a month, bro, but I know. know, but you might as well. <laughs> okay, let's go for it. I mean, I can okay. guarantee a month. I will. Uh, yes, let's go. Big. Well, Russ, starting when? Starting tomorrow? Starting to- Start tomorrow. Why, okay, why tomorrow wait? Morning. Tomorrow and whoever's morning. listening to this, like whenever you listen to it, start right away. Start like, then. If you're listening to this, pause it, make a video, post it, and come back and continue listening. <laughs> let's do it. The Daily Dog yeah. Trainer Challenge. Hashtag Daily Dog Trainer. I dig it. Dude, Russ, we have to have you back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. 
I love yeah, it, man. Anytime. Yeah, I, I really, I, I, as I told you via text, man, I really, really love your 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 voice. Um, I mean, not not like like the way it sounds, but I like. But I love you. You have indoctrinated. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like, I like, I like the way you speak. I like the way you think. I like the way uh, you know Mariano didn't know who you were, and I was like, you're gonna like this guy. He's really dope. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you so much. Uh, we always ask all of our special guests this. Um, I mean, we've kind of dabbled on it, um, but we talk about. Um, dog training is art right because like some people they always want to they want to try their best to like create schools of thought like just as they did in art right are you uh this type of artist are you this type of artist are you that type of artist and it's interesting because our art form does have its own form of expression art you know it's that's why it's going to be really hard to tie any one method or application or technique or practice particularly down because uh, we all agree that dog training is an art form in, in mm -hmm. its own way, right? It is a form of expression. Um, we made a metaphor for, or, or like a, an idea that, uh, you know, if we were artists, if you take the archetype of an artist with their beret and their paint, like their canvas and their brushes and their pencils and all this stuff we had, uh, you know, we asked a lot of our guests, like, so, so what would you add to the art kit? <laughs> like, what would you add to the art kit? And um, it's going to be really hard for me to tell you all of them. But uh, Michael Ellis said, uh, you know, you got to have technique. Technique has to be in there. Uh, Tyler Mudo said, you got to understand learning theory. Uh, Tommy Davis said, uh, you got to, you got to put in hard work and reps. Um, uh, some other trainers, they mentioned uh, Veronica and Melissa. They said, you got to be honest. <laughs> you got to be honest to your clients. Um, let's see. Um, Pretty much, what are some characteristics that you think help help make or principles to live by that make you that 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 either help you in dog training or can help make you better a better dog trainer? I'm gonna sound repetitive as fuck, but learn to be authentic. Yeah, like be yourself, whatever that looks like. Don't be yourself like me. Be yourself like yourself. Mm -hmm. And and. I think that it plays out. We spoke a lot how it plays out with the business side, but it plays out the way you show up to a dog. You can't lie to an animal. They'll read right through your bullshit. Mm -hmm. Like you just can't. They'll know when you're serious or not, especially if you're dealing with behavioral cases, not just like obedience work. Right. They'll read through you. You got to show up as who you are. And the cool thing about it is that dogs are not going to judge you. So it's actually the best way to practice being yourself mm -hmm. is when you have a leash in your hand, when you're with a bunch of dogs, but learn to be authentically yourself. And, and the other thing I would say is learn how to be present. Because again, if you can't be present with a dog, you're going to get your ass bit at some point. True. And, and you're not going to do what's best for that dog. Like besides that you can get yourself hurt, you're not going to do uh -huh. what's best for that dog. Because right. at some point, I think most trainers will learn it the hard way. When you have a paint by number way of doing things, eventually you'll have that dog that either you fuck up yep. or it just doesn't work. Yep. And if you can truly be present with each animal you work with and authentically showing up as yourself, they go hand in hand, then yep. you'll be able to do right by every dog you work with and do right by every client you work with and be most successful in life by being present and being yourself. I love that. Awesome, man. That's gold. That is gold. Um, great, man. Great. Any last thing you want to say, Mariana? No, you killed it, man. It was so nice having you on, Russ, man. We need to have you back very soon, for sure. Agreed. Agreed. Let's do this. All right. Anything. All right Let's well, do this. Can I say something? Well, Let's yeah. do the 30-day challenge. Okay. Okay. Let's encourage, again, anyone who's listening to this to actually do it. Okay. Right? Hashtag, what was it? Daily dog Daily training. Dog trainer. Daily dog trainer. And yeah. then let's talk again once you've done it and see how you guys feel. Ooh, about it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's that, do that for that sure. That would be sick. That would be sick. All right. I really appreciate that. Uh, that kick in the ass. I think that's really, <laughs> uh, really, really important. Cool guys. Uh, well, everyone, we really want to thank Naham Russell from uh, Calm Canine Training. You guys can follow him on Instagram at Calm, K-A-L-M. Uh, K9, the letter K, the number nine training, calm K9 training uh, on Instagram. You can also follow his podcast, uh, not just dogs podcast um, and check out his website. What's your website, buddy? I don't even have a website. I know that's crazy. Doesn't have a website. Instagram um, is his website. That's all Instagram, you guys really need. Instagram and Facebook are my website. One thing about the podcast is if you're going to search it on YouTube, then just go to my channel, which is calm K9 training. So I'm calm K9 training everywhere, everywhere. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Um, that's the best way to find me. And the, if you want to find the podcast on like audio things like Spotify and 
Apple and Anchor and all of that stuff, then you could search mm-hmm. not just dogs with Russ. Love that. Love that. Yeah. I listen to you on, uh, on Google podcasts. So I got an, I got an Android myself, but yeah, those of you guys who are listening to this episode, if you found it helpful or useful, or, you know, a dog trainer or are a dog trainer, go ahead and share this with at least one other person. So you guys can, uh, can share some of, some of this, this, uh, inspiration given to us by Russ. Um, and we want to thank you guys so much for listening. Now, those of you guys who are on any specific platforms, whether it be Spotify, iTunes, um, you know, the, the, it allows us to help more people and, and be more searchable, the more reviews that we get. So if you guys found uh, any value in this, please go ahead and leave us a review on the particular platform that you guys are listening on. Uh, and again, guys, we want to thank you guys for listening to episode 42. Again, thank you, Nahum Russell, aka Russ, uh, for joining us. And uh, this is episode 42. My name is Brent Labrada, and that is Mariano Alvarez, and we will see you guys in episode 43. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Dog Trainers Podcast, a podcast created by dog trainers, for dog trainers, or anyone who's ever fallen in love with man's best friend. We really hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and we hope to see you back for the next one. But in the meantime, please follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Dog Trainers Podcast. Go ahead and leave a comment. Ask us any questions that you want. We would love to connect with our dog trainer communities all around the world. Take care, guys. We'll see you next time.